or uh, the chair now recognizes Mr. Van Drew from New Jersey. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you all for being here. So I did a couple thoughts, and I know everybody likes to philosophize while we're up here, but you can't help it. It's part of the job. But, you know, Mr. Spear, when you say that small truckers, you, you know, you, you can look those folks in the eye and say that their job is always going to be there. And I say this, and I don't know you, so I don't say this in any dispersion at all to you. Um, you know, in all my years, of, my years of being in Congress and being in the state Senate, I had a lot of people look me right in the eye and say something wasn't going to happen, and it sure did. Um, as the years go by, uh, it's going to be cheaper for you to do it automated eventually, uh, and it's going to be, you know, maybe easier. I don't know, because we're going to have to see what the outcome is. But I feel we're losing small businesses in this country at every level. Uh, Mr. Burleson talked about farms. And yeah, I know that now people can do other jobs, but a lot of people like having a small family farm. They can't do it. Lots of folks have their small trucking companies. I have 93 towns. One of them, Vineland, has a number of small trucking companies and family owned through multiple generations. That in reality, if you look into the future, if we're not careful, is the way this is going to go. Um, do you ever envision um, AI taking care of all the services that these trucks will need as far as, um, you know, tune-ups and, you know, the still the basic things that have to be done, the vehicles? So I, I can talk. Yeah, admit, yeah whoever wants to answer. If, if that's okay, thank you for the question. And, and this is why we are actually investing in training and accreditation programs. So we work with the Pittsburgh... Pittsburgh Technical College, where we're working with them to develop training for vehicle service technicians for this industry. We're working with Gallatin College in Bozeman, Montana, to develop sensor training or sensor technician training and development. So we are trying to help develop the, the upscaling for the workforce of the future. Okay. Um, in, in the future, do you ever anticipate that, I mean, after you're gone and I'm gone, I'll be going first, but... Um, do you ever anticipate that there will be a time when everything will be automated, including the service work that needs to be done and everything else? I mean, if, if we can drive huge trucks on the road automated, I don't know why we couldn't do the service automated. I mean, literally, do you picture a time, generations in the future, where you'll be a totally automated company and there'll only be corporate leadership that will be human? I don't think my imagination is, is, is that big. Uh, but what I could, what I would reflect on is that if I, I think back to time well before me, you know, the 15th century, 16th century, I think the folks looking forward to the jobs of today wouldn't even be able to fathom them. Uh, and I would expect that there's going to be incredible new opportunities that are afforded by innovation and by America leading the way with that. One, one point I would make, too, we spoke about airplanes, and they are automated to a great degree. There's always two pilots still in the plane. And that's what concerned me. If we were automating, but there would still be somebody, a human being that knew how to drive a truck in the truck, that's one thing. But the fact that we're just going to have these trucks without any human assistance other than at the terminals still concerns me. Um, deadly crap, and I know it's different, and I know the system is different, but still, Tesla, again, folks looked you in the eye and said, man, this is going to be no problems at all. And their vehicles have failed. There was one instance where they failed to see a tractor trailer in the sun in an Uber car in Tempe, Arizona, struck a pedestrian after failing to identify her. And that's only a few of the issues. And I associate myself with some of the comments you made, Ms. Chase. Um, these examples highlight the safety risks that we still do have, and we have to go carefully, and we still have to incorporate. And I know the words are easy in Congress. But the reality, the truck drivers who've made their living through generations and small business, I mean, small business is going to become non-existent if we keep going this way in America. Um, American truckers deserve clarification, and that's what we're trying to do here. And um, it's funny, it's, and, and other people have mentioned it, we're in the middle of National Truck Appreciation Week, but yet we're having this conversation of how, and I know you wouldn't say that, and I know you don't think that, but we can do away with truck drivers in reality. Um, let, me, let me say this. Um, I have a few questions, and I guess I know the one answer real quick, just because I know we're going to run out of time. Do you believe autonomous is safer than the truck driving, human being driving the truck? Yes or no? 
Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Romer. Congressman, I'll just answer very briefly, seeing that we're at time here. I, I think that the exciting thing is what we, what we see now from the data that's coming out as our members are reaching certain thresholds is that we are, we are improving against the status quo. Uh, that is important. It's important to keeping roads safe for the United States. It's something we're very proud of. One question I'm going to not ask you because I know our time is up, but I'll send in, in writing. Is this going to save the companies a great deal of money ultimately? So I thank you for being here. I yield you, back.